Okay, so you know how sometimes you hear a story and you're like, no way, that can't be real. Right, like too strange to be true. Exactly. Well, today's deep dive is one of those stories. We're talking about the Virginia incident. Virginia. January 1996, small town in Brazil. Suddenly, boom, strange lights, mysterious creatures, the whole nine yards. It's become like the big UFO case in Brazil, kind of their own Roswell, you could say. And just like Roswell, a lot of debate around it. So we're going to dig into all of it, what we know, what we don't know, and why it still has people talking all these years later. What makes Virginia so interesting, at least for me, is it wasn't just a blip on the radar. You know, it wasn't just like, oh, I saw a weird light in the sky and that's it. This thing unfolded over days, multiple events, different witnesses. Um, it gets complicated. OK, see, that's what I'm talking about. Complicated is good. Give me the rundown. What happened first? So it all starts. Well, it supposedly all starts on January 20th, 1996. Normal day in Virginia, people going about their business, and then bam, people start seeing these strange lights in the sky. Okay, so far, sounds like a UFO sighting, right? What makes these lights so special? Well, these weren't just your average, you know, twinkling in the distance kind of lights. Witnesses said these things were moving, and not in a straight line either. We're talking erratic movements, zigzagging, sudden drops, almost like they were... I don't know, playing around up there. Playing around, huh? That's one way to put it. Yeah. But seriously, like defying gravity kind of stuff. Yeah, witnesses described it as almost defying gravity. And you have to keep in mind, Brazil, especially this region, has a history of UFO reports. So for people to be this riled up, it must have been something truly unusual. So you've got everyone looking up at the sky, wondering what's going on. But then things get even weirder. We start hearing about people seeing something on the ground, right? Something creature-like. Yeah, this is where things take that turn from... Huh, that's strange to, wait, what? Hit me with it. So a few different people report seeing something strange around the time of the lights, but the most detailed accounts, the ones that really stuck, came from three young girls. Okay, so we have multiple witnesses here. What did the girls say they saw? They described this being about five feet tall, they said, with this large head, really thin arms, and get this piercing red eyes. Whoa, okay, now that's an image that would stick with you. Tell me about it. Oh, and it gets weirder. They also said this creature had this awful smell, like a really strong, almost chemical kind of smell. Chemical smell, huh? That's not something you forget easily. No, not at all. And what's interesting is that smell, that really specific sensory detail, it seems to be a common thread in a lot of alleged alien encounter stories, almost like a, I don't know, a signature or something. Okay, now that's creepy. So you've got these girls, they see this thing, they smell this smell. You'd think the whole town would be in an uproar, right? You'd think so, right. But here's where it gets even more bizarre. The story doesn't end there. The government, specifically the Brazilian military, gets involved. And let's just say their involvement didn't exactly clear things up. Oh, this is where the conspiracy theories start swirling, isn't it? You know it. At first it was all denials. Nothing to see here, they said. Move along. Yeah. But then, then they admit that something was captured. Okay, hold on. They deny it, but then they admit to capturing something. Exactly. Talk about a mixed message, right? And the explanation they gave, well, let's just say it didn't really satisfy anyone. They claimed it was a deformed human being. A deformed human being. That's their big explanation. Come on. I know, right? It's just like if I saw something with large head, red eyes, and it smelled like a chemical plant, deformed human wouldn't be my first guess. Or my second or third. Or... Yeah, you... yeah, you get the idea. And look, I'm no biologist, but the creature's description it doesn't line up with any known medical conditions that I'm aware of. So naturally, people were skeptical, to say the least. OK, so we've got shaky eyewitness accounts, a government that's clearly hiding something. It's a recipe for a full-blown conspiracy theory. But this is where Virginia goes from local mystery to global phenomenon. Right. I mean, it's 1996, right? Everyone's got a phone. News travels fast. Exactly. And this wasn't just some local gossip. This was juicy stuff. We're talking strange creatures, possible government cover-ups, the works. It was perfect for the news cycle. Oh, yeah. Front page material right there. Mm -hmm. So how does the story actually spread? Well, it starts small, like you said, local phone calls, rumors in the streets, but then it hits the local newspapers. And from there, I'm guessing it just explodes. Oh, it totally explodes. It's not long before the national news in Brazil picks it up and then, boom, international headlines. The world wants to know about Virginia. Everyone wants to know. Journalists are flooding the town. Ufologists are coming out of the woodwork. It's this whole big media frenzy. I can only imagine what that must have been like for the people of Virginia. 
This sleepy little town suddenly becomes the center of the UFO universe. It's wild, and what's even wilder is how Virginia responded to it all. You see, instead of shying away from it, you know, trying to pretend it never happened, they kind of embraced it. They embraced it. Wait, are you saying what I think you're saying? Oh, yeah. Virginia went full-on UFO town. No way. Seriously. Dead serious. Today, Virginia is a tourist destination. But people aren't going there for the beaches or anything like that. They're going for the aliens. So they've got, like, the whole UFO tourism thing going on? They've got it all. UFO-themed tours, alien statues in the town square. You can even buy little alien souvenirs. They even have a UFO festival every year. Wow, that's amazing. Talk about turning lemons into lemonade. Mm -hmm. But it makes you wonder, what's the lasting impact of something like Virginia? Whether you believe it or not, it clearly left its mark. It definitely did. I think at its core, Virginia, it reminds us that there are still mysteries out there. Things we can't explain, things that challenge our understanding of the world. It's that whole we don't know everything yeah. thing, right? And that can be pretty exciting, even a little bit scary. Exactly. And whether it was a genuine alien encounter, some weird military experiment, or just a really convincing case of mistaken identity, Virginia makes you stop and think, what if? What if indeed? And isn't that what a good deep dive is all about? Getting you to ask those big, maybe even unanswerable questions. Absolutely. Sometimes it's not about finding the answers, but about embracing the mystery. Well said. Well, folks, there you have it. The Virginia Incident. A story of strange lights, even stranger creatures, and a town that embraced the unknown. Whether you believe it or not, one thing's for sure, it's a story that'll stick with you. Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring those mysteries.